Hey, I'm Pat, and in this video I will be covering inheritance, and we will cover a little bit of polymorphism in this video as well, just because it kind of fit into the video. Uh, so, this is kind of a prequel or a sequel. Yeah, a sequel, not a prequel. It's a sequel to my uh, object-oriented programming video, so if you haven't seen that, or if you don't understand uh, object-oriented programming already, uh, I recommend you watch that. But now what I'm going to go over is inheritance. So first off, what I have here is a very basic uh, pistol script. So this would be represent a gun, right? So we have a constructor that makes a new pistol, go an ammo capacity, how much damage it does, headshot multiplier, whatever. We just make our self object with the metal table. Then we set all of its properties and then we make sure to set its current ammo to zero because we need to have a separate property for its current ammo, which we can modify. And then we return the self object. And then we have a method here for shooting. So if it's out of ammo, it will say it's out of ammo. And this should also return here, so I'll add that. But then I'll print pew, uh, use up the ammo, and then it'll tell us how much ammo is left. And then we just got a reload method, which uh, sets the current ammo to our ammo capacity. So I know this is kind of like boring, like this isn't a real gun or anything, but this is just like an example placeholder just to make it somewhat simple for the video because uh, it's going to get a little bit more complicated later. So what we're going to do is get our pistol class. And I believe in the last video I actually didn't really cover what a class is, but uh, I will in just a second. So what a class is, is pretty much this script, all right? This is a class, and uh, you can think of a class as a blueprint for your object, which will have all your methods as well as your constructors for the object, which will tell you how the object can behave and all that, and you'll use your class to construct a new object. It's pretty much how classes are. Uh, Roblox uh, Lua itself doesn't actually have classes, this is just a module script, but you can think of it as a class because Roblox doesn't actually have object oriented programming, it's just a uh, fake pseudo OOP, but you know, whatever. So we'll make a pistol now. Pistol class.new. Uh, actually, a new pistol, and then we'll give it. You know, capacity of 3, damage 10, headshot multiplier 1.1, whatever. Uh, damage and multiplier doesn't actually matter too much, but what we'll do is we'll make a for loop, and we'll loop 5 times, and we will shoot our pistol. So we'll go ahead and look at the output, test, run. It says we're out of ammo 5 times because we never loaded it, so... What we can do is we can reload it, pistol, reload. Obviously it's not going to shoot five times because it doesn't have five bullets, but you can see we get uh, pew three times and then the last two times it runs out of ammo. So pretty simple how it works, okay? Nothing too complicated. But what you can see here is it's only single. So once we shoot, it only shoots one time. Uh, say if we want to make something like a burst fire gun or like an automatic gun uh, What we would have to do is technically Modify our shoot method to pretty much fit all that it would have to have maybe an if statement that checked what kind of gun it is and then based on that we would have to uh, Do different things based off of what kind of gun it is which would really make our shoot script very uh, or our shoot method alone um, much bigger and kind of oversized a little bit harder to read a lot harder to read really So it might be a better idea to maybe split it up in a better way So this is where something like an in, uh, inheritance would come into play uh, We could do something where uh, basically what inheritance is is it allows you to inherit uh, the properties and the methods of a uh, parent class or a super class and it allows the subclass to pretty much use those methods and properties 
without having to rewrite all those methods and property definitions. So per se, we can have a uh, burst uh, gun class, which could be a subclass of new pistol. And in that class, we could change its uh, shoot method to have different behavior than this pistol, but we could still keep the reload method without having to rewrite our reload method. And we can also keep all these properties as well without having to actually write that in our other script. So I already kind of made a script like that. And here's kind of how it works. So what we're going to need to do is get our parent class, which is going to be our pistol class. So this is going to be our parent class. It can also be called a super class. Then we need our own module. And we need to set its index to be itself. And now this is another key point where we set the uh, modules meta table to be the pistol class. So this allows us to do a little bit more inheritance where uh, if we try and index the module and it doesn't find it, then it'll check the pistol class instead. And if it finds it there, then it'll use it. Uh, kind of simple, hopefully that makes sense. And then we have a different constructor here we call it new burst. And we actually added another uh, argument here which is the burst rate pretty much the rate of fire how fast it will burst right and now what we do is we define self as a pistol object right so we create a new pistol object pass it uh, these three arguments because those are the same ones that our pistol uses which will then return our pistol object then what we can do is we can set meta table we can set the pistol's meta table to be our burst fire class module. So then uh, it will now inherit all of the methods from our burst fire class, right? And uh, this class will have priority over the, uh, the parent class. So if we have the same method name, like shoot here, it will actually override that uh, shoot class of the parent and that's actually a, a form of polymorphism uh, overriding and that's technically what this is this is overriding so what overriding is is it pretty much just means that the subclass or the child class whatever you want to call it is overriding a method of the parent class to give it different behavior so you can see they both have the same method both have shoot but in this one, uh, we use a for loop to shoot because it's a burst uh, gun. So it's going to shoot multiple times. So we use a for loop that it will shoot multiple times instead of just a single shot like in our shoot method here. So that's actually uh, overriding. That's a form of polymorphism. Uh, polymorphism really is just like uh, kind of changing uh, the behavior of a subclass to kind of alter uh, the parents methods to kind of like override them. There's also overloading which would be pretty much it doesn't really matter too much in Roblox because uh, Lua doesn't really work in that way, but Overloading would be say if we had a different number of arguments in our shoot method compared to our parents so maybe our parent has uh, one argument and then in our subclass, maybe we add two extra arguments, and that would actually be called overloading, where we're changing the amount of arguments that our uh, method takes, which is also polymorphism. So, uh, backed up here, then we just set the self burst rate. We don't need to set the other properties because we already get them from our pistol class when we make a new pistol right here. And then we just return our object so that way we can use it. And you see we actually have no reload function or method because it's inheriting it from the uh, parent class. All right. So now what we can do is we can make it a burst gun. Uh, and... We'll give it maybe double the ammo capacity, maybe some more damage, whatever. It doesn't actually matter too much. And then burst rate, we'll do 0 
And I'm actually just going to get rid of this part for now because we don't need that. Then we'll do a burst reload right at the beginning. You can see it even gave us IntelliSense for this. Like it even let us autofill. Even though our burst class doesn't even have a reload method, it knows that it's inheriting that method, which is really cool. And then 4i equals 1. And we'll do uh, 6 times. And we'll just uh, shoot. Actually, this will only uh, shoot two times, so you know we'll just do three. So whatever, uh, it'll just show you the uh, that it actually works, right? So every 0 0.5 seconds, it shoots three bullets. Uh, I don't know why I did this. It shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't matter. I don't actually care that much. But <laughs> so you see, we reloaded. It shot uh, multiple times and per shoot so you can see that it's clearly using this method instead of the R1 as well you can s you could have seen you also visually saw that it was waiting between each print which the pistol class would not have done uh, because it has no weight inside the shoot method so you can see it actually used this method instead of its parents shoot method but it still used a reload method because we didn't redefine it inside of this script so that really is all that there is to inheritance. It's actually not that complicated. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to grasp maybe, but it's not too crazy. Uh, really all it is is just you're taking all the methods from the parent class, all the properties and methods, everything from the parent class, and you're just adding it to the subclass and the subclass can maybe change those methods to do different things or maybe even add methods or properties so it could behave in different ways which is very useful uh, now what I'm going to go over is a little bit of how Roblox Studio works more because it's not something I've gone over in the last video I didn't really even have time for it but uh, in Roblox Studio there's actually uh, multiple different uh, instance types that you can't actually see uh, so what we have right here is a basic part a very normal part uh, it's just a normal part right and what I can do is I can add a mesh part like this and you can see these are both parts right they're both uh, parts but they're different classes right so mesh part is a part and I don't know why I had this all close off but mesh part, it has a mesh in it, but it visually and its properties as well are pretty much the same as a normal part. And you can see, right, it has all the same properties as this part. And as well as if we were to script it, it would have the same methods and events. So you would think uh, that maybe a mesh part is inheriting from this part or something like that. But the way it actually works is, uh, you've probably have seen it in uh, the Roblox documentation or API if you've read it. It says uh, like it inherits uh, the methods or events from another class and it calls things classes because that's kind of like their class type. And it kind of fits in with the object oriented theme. So a part and a mesh part, and I think there's like maybe another thing, uh, they both actually inherit from a super class called the base part and the base part is pretty much just a representation of all the parts and it has you know the touched event uh, get children um, actually no it doesn't have get children well technically it does but I'll go over that in a second but it has you know uh, size C frame position orientation material reflectance transparency all that stuff that's all part of a base part and all parts will inherit all those properties from the base part. And now base part actually is a subclass of a super class called instance. So instance is like the big parent that is like where everything uh, comes from. And an instance obviously will have uh, methods like get children, uh, get descendants, uh, find first child, things like that, which pretty much every instance in Roblox Studio has. All those, every instance has those methods because 
every instance inherits those methods from that superclass, which is called uh, instance, which is why we call them all instances in a way, right? So that's pretty much how that works. Uh, there's like some other things that inherit from other classes and stuff like that, but I just thought it'd be a cool thing to go over in this video because it's kind of a really nice connection to make between uh, how Roblox works and you know object-oriented programming. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Not too long, nothing crazy. Uh, as far as making your own script, uh, I don't really have like a good uh, use case for object or inheritance, honestly. Other than really like guns, they're a good use case. You could also maybe do like a combat system with inheritance uh, if you find a use case for it, but honestly myself, uh, I don't really find myself using inheritance much in scripts. Uh, I don't really have much of a use for it most of the time. I don't think I've ever actually used it in a proper use case where it made, I don't think I've ever used it period. <laughs> but uh, it is a useful thing to know and if you're going to learn maybe in our language that involves or object oriented programming, having a decent grasp on inheritance is a good thing to know. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching.